along the greasy roads come the trucks of the NZ division. Supplying the front lines in winter is a tough job, but the Kiwi drivers keep up the great reputation they earned in the desert. It takes more than slush or sand to stop them. Ahead of them is Hellfire Corner, the start of the Mad Mile, a mile of road in full view of the German guns in Orsonia. The shelling is continuous, and so is the traffic. Is your journey really necessary is not the question to ask these boys. The New Zealand gunners are not idle either. Between firing orders, they line up their shells and snatch something to eat. Jerry does not have it all his own way. From the observation post, the artillery officer keeps their lines well taped. For any sign of movement over there, he has an answer. A compass reading is taken, and the boys let Jerry have it. Shelling keeps the Germans below ground. To blast them out of the town, the planes are called up. Through the traditional Italian landscape, bombs add a deadly pattern. These ancient hilltop towns were built for defense. Orsonia is no exception. It commands the surrounding countryside. From it, the Germans can see every allied move. Every building is a fortress. It cannot be stormed. Only bombs can drive the Germans out. General Montgomery has just taken leave of the 8th Army. After 18 months, he has read his last order of the day as its commander. In his final speech, Monty said that he'd always tried to remember that an army was made up of human beings. He thought that the 8th Army's success was due to its emphasis on the human factor. Certainly, few modern generals have been so idolized by their men. Few have so richly deserved it. In the front lines, the Kiwis had a muddy Christmas. Christmas dinner had to be eaten out in the open. If the men had been dreaming of a white Christmas, they were disappointed. But they certainly got a white New Year. And it wasn't so merry and bright either. The whole division was snowed under, and there was no rest until it was dug out. Fortunately, Jerry was in the same boat. With the snow on them, the camouflage nets were most effective. The men couldn't even find their own guns. The snow filled everything, including the food dixes. That's what comes of not putting away the dishes at night. Motor transport was in a bad way. Right now, the New Zealand division could scarcely be called a mobile division. Some of these New Zealanders had not seen snow before, and now they're not overjoyed that they have. Their tent collapsed on top of them, and they spent a cold night huddled in trucks. That won't happen again. After a hot drink, they set to work to build a more permanent shelter. Its architecture owes something to a Taranaki cow bale. With sides and roof protected by bamboo and covered with canvas, it will at least be snowproof. In the meantime, the Kiwi drivers have overcome another obstacle. They've got their trucks and jeeps going again. On the peaks is a world of white. One of the few remaining Italians in this area looks for food for his small flock. The condition of these people is pitiful. German demolition bands have blown up their homes. Typical is the town of Gessapolena. Here, the Germans followed their blasted earth policy. Italian towns are too solid to burn, so every building was systematically mined. This town lies in no man's land. Through it now moves a British patrol. There is always the chance that the Germans may return or use some of its ruined buildings for observation posts. At scattered points, men check their equipment after digging it out of the snow.
From the ridges, mountain troops are bringing in a wounded mate. This is always a difficult job in this tough country, and today the snow makes it tougher still. these mountains, wheeled traffic is not much help. Men have to rely on themselves and on animals. With mud and snow, the army mule has come into his own again. In spite of all modern equipment, an army is still at the mercy of the weather. Here too, the rugged country ties it down. But the men of the New Zealand division plug on. No matter how tough the going or how rotten the weather, they always win through.